is the Riding Dirty Radio Show. It's your boy, Vic XL. And I'm Boss Lady Bird. How are you doing today? I'm good, sir. How about yourself? So let me let me tell you um, what my wife said the other day. She was listening to episodes one and two. And, and she was like, you know what? I like the f- I like how you and Bird are doing it, like not putting yourselves on the screen. She's like, because Vic, you've always had a radio face. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like your voice doesn't match your appearance somewhat. No, nah, I think she's telling me not to show my face. <laughs> she's telling me not to show you. Maybe you too purdy. You too purdy. Man, no, 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 no. <laughs> she said I got a radio face. So from now on, it's your boy, Uncle Radio Face Big A Phil. No. <laughs> Bird, I gotta say again, we on we on episode, we on another episode. I am so, so honored that you have partnered up with me. Oh, I'm, 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 I, I, uh, I love it. Rick. Like watching our first two episodes, like it just is more inspiring every time that we do this. Look, and I'm, look, I'm, I, I laugh because I'm still, Bird don't like female rappers. No, no, I, I really don't. <laughs> like, I just don't. I don't know. Maybe I can't relate. I, I don't know what it is. It's just they don't talk about nothing I'm trying to hear about. But guess what? I know something you can relate to, and that's why we're going to talk about it today. You can relate to the 85 South show. Absolutely. Oh, man, I love those guys so much and everything they do. And I got in my possession something that a lot of people don't have, and I see you, and let's talk about it. Let's Ladies talk. and gentlemen, boys and girls, for those who don't, DC Young Fly of the 85 South of Wild and Out um, of movie called The Apartments. The, not The Apartment for all my politically correct people. The Apartments. The Apartments. Okay? The Apartments. This movie is a funny movie, but I sent it to Bird. And I want Bird and me to give you guys our true, honest review of the apartments. Is that cool with you, Bird? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. First thing I got to say is the reason I have this movie. Um, so for those who've been on The Rock, there's been a actors and writers strike in Hollywood for maybe about four months now. It's mm-hmm. been going on. And departments, T.I., his Grand Hustle Films, which shout out to myself, that logo that says Grand Hustle, um, I actually designed that about 15, 20 years ago. And they still use the same logo. So pat on kudos. Actually, kudos to my guy, Rob. I used to have a graphics company. I didn't design nothing. But I had the know-how. I knew the people and Rob done the work, so we had a company together. But the Grand Hustle logo was done by, it's a byproduct of Riding Dirty Radio. So anytime you see it, Riding Dirty Radio has a handprint on that. But the film company is something they launched a while ago, a while ago, and this is actually T.I.'s second project through the film company. And they have a deal through Tubi. And for those who don't know Tubi, Tubi is the home of all the hood movies, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I know Boosie was trying to do that too on his website. He wanted to put all the hood, movies, but I think Ti beat him to it. Well, Tubi. yeah. Well, well, well. Tubi, Tubi. Actually, Ti doesn't own Tubi. Tubi is like what I call the free ghetto Netflix. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so this is one of the first. Uh, this is T.I.'s first venture that's going straight to Tubi because T.I. actually had some things. He had a movie that he did with uh, Mike Epps that was on Netflix. I can't even remember the name of it, but it was about a restaurant. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But this is going to be the Tubi. And he partnered up with DC Young Fly. They filmed this movie. Um, actually, they filmed this movie last summer. And this is a comedy. 
my first question to you is, Bird, did you like it? I loved it, Vic. Like, it is the best thing that I've seen as far as movies coming out, especially uh, based in the hood since Friday. I've not seen nothing this good come out since Friday. Okay. Now, I was like, man. Okay, so it's funny. It's funny that you said that. I want to start there. T.I., um, when he's been doing his media run, he doesn't like people to compare it to Friday, but it's the first thing that comes to your mind when you watch it, right? It was, it was, it it didn't have quite the the same characters, I guess, as as Friday, but like that's the only closest thing that I knew to compare it to. And to me, it was even greater than Friday. I'm gonna be honest. I think it was even greater than Bird. Now you tripped. No, it was genius, Vic. It was genius. Nobody, not one line in that movie, nobody said anything that was wrong or I disagreed with. I, I agree with that. But, Burr, you just said it was better than Friday. I'm sorry. I do. I think it was. I think uh, the, the mechanic, I thought he was really fucking funny. And a few of them, like, I think that they were even funnier than Smokey. Like, I laughed so hard at this movie, more than I did Friday. Bird, hold on. I'm going to do something right now. We, you might I'm need doing... to watch it again, Vic. You might need to watch it again. Like, I played, I paid so close attention to the things that they were saying, the, the jokes, uh, the roast. Uh, I love when the little boy wanted to Bird. know how to get a woman, how nobody told him Bird. anything wrong or bad. What, Vic? Bro, hold on one second. I don't know if you can hear this, and I just put him on the spot. So on the phone right now, what up, Doug? Um, Doug, I don't even know if they can hear us, but Doug is T.I.'s manager, um, high-ranking official over at Grand Hustle and Grand Hustle Films, and I they probably can't hear this, but but Doug, me and Boss Lady Bird, meet Boss Lady Bird, we are reviewing the apartments. What up, my guy? Doug, she just said this is a stamp of a, approval. Bird got these, she's chirping around these streets. Bird just said the apartments is better than Friday. Okay, I'll see y'all later, okay? Doug, hey, you get the stamp of approval. You get the stamp of approval. Y'all got a masterpiece. It was genius, dude. It was fucking genius. It was. It was. Nobody told that boy. Nobody said anything wrong in the movie that I don't agree with. Like, I swear to God. I do. Everybody was right. Everybody was right with to, as far as uh, from the advice to the little boy, uh, just about life, how things are in, in, in apartments in an area like that. I've been there before myself many times. And that's exactly what it is. From the candy lady to the mechanic to the crackhead, everybody give that dude like great. Nobody said nothing wrong. Doug, I know you're super busy. I just use you for content. Thank you for the clout. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you, Doug, for answering the phone. You could have really messed me up, and I don't even know if it could be heard. Uh, man, department, departments is a classic, sir. Tell Tip, tell everybody over at the crew, um, hey man, what up? And it's riding dirty approved. Keep winning. All right, appreciate y'all. All right. Hey Bird, let them do that one day. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, that's a cloud chase for him, Bird. That's a cloud chase. Um, shout out Doug. I don't know if this is going can be heard. I have the worst. I should have. I can hear him, so I would say that the, the it picked up. So y'all can do your googles. Doug Peterson is vice president of Grand Hustle. He's Ti's manager. Um, I wanted him to hear hear us give the review, and he answered too. I was shocked. I didn't know if he's gonna answer. <laughs> but okay, Bird. I didn't want to say this while I had him on the phone. I don't think is. I can't put it as good as a Friday Bird. Well, now, in my opinion, I think you need to watch it again. So look, but I do <laughs> agree. I do agree a whole hundred percent. Um, all the information that they gave the boy was pertinent information 
to becoming a man. Absolutely. And I loved when he asked the candy lady and she was like, you need money and some more money and whatever. And then like the her husband sent her in the house and then he give his advice. But neither one of them was wrong. So about what a woman want. Neither one of their advice was bad. They were both spot on. So let me let me let me tell you, I'm going to do good, bad and ugly. That's my perspective of the movie. So let me tell you my good. Um, the first 45 minutes of the movie was the funniest shit I've seen in 2023. Man, it's a, like I said, it's the funniest shit I've probably ever fucking seen. Ever in my life. I laugh so hard, Vic. I'm not even playing with you. I loved all the characters and, and everybody was spot on. Like, I bet they didn't even really script this shit. I, I bet they it. just told him the scenario and let him go because all the characters are, are very good improv actors anyway, from Nav Green to Carlos Miller, DC Young Fly, Lil Duval, like all of them was so just spot on with their characters, man. Like, and it's some real shit that I've sit around the hood and like heard people discuss, and like they were so I mean, and the mechanic, he was so funny. He was so funny. Um, the mechanic, his name is K dub. Um I, I couldn't think of it to save my life. I was trying to tell Gene about it this morning, and I couldn't think of his name. K Dub. I'm glad you told me that, because yeah, um, he was funny when he was when he was fun <laughs> when he was roasting the fat guy. Oh my god! Oh my god! I died. I died three times. So my good was that first 45 minutes. The first 45 up and okay. So let me tell you for me. The whole concept of, first of all, if you know anything about hood life, all this stuff rings true. Everything, they got every element that we know if you came up in a project area, or if you visit the projects on a regular basis. Matter of fact. The lady to the crackhead, man. They had it down. The mechanic, you know, <laughs> you, I, I can fix that. Give me about three weeks. All, all that is real. And it shows, and, and the funny thing is, because a lot of people in society has have a um, a narrow view of the projects or the hood, whatever you want to call it. But it's an ecosystem within within itself when you go into the project. It's mm -hmm. an ecosystem. You have a mechanic there. You have you have what would be considered your convenience store store there. You have you have drugs there you have the 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 woman who looks like a supermodel although who you're trying to figure out why is she here and she could be somewhere else there you have all these elements that are outside the project in the project it's its own ecosystem you have some of the best information when it comes to politics right there you know you, you have some of the worst information you gotta respect your yes. environment just like g mama said yes so if not, they're gonna disassemble your car <laughs> and sell it back to you. Yes. Now, I I really like the fact that I also feel like you it felt like an improv. It felt like there might have been a skeleton of a script, but they told them, I want to put y'all in this element, go. And yeah, this is your character, this is the scenario. Uh, do it. Like yes. I feel the same way. Um I really, 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 really enjoyed the movie the most up until I felt like the movie could have went off after they put the car back together. To no, because they hadn't even brought the little boy right, in you right. know, yet. So to me, to me, to me, okay, so there are some parts where, so to me, that was the hit. That was the good for me. Now, my bad, the bad for me was they touched on some parts that they didn't tie the loose ends. Because initially, I thought it was going to be messages to the smaller boy. Yeah, I get that. I, I, I did too because I was like, well, where'd the little old boy go? But okay. I, get, I think what it was, like she said, he wasn't ready yet. Grandma told him you ain't ready to be out there and all that mess yet. Okay, so that but that was my bad from a director standpoint. 
you kind of you kind of led us down the road and then you just dropped us off. That was my bad. Now my ugly, my ugly was there was one scene, there was one scene that I felt like they could have left the graphics out, not the scene, the graphics because I didn't get it. There was a scene when the mechanic started joining the landlord. And they done like the Street Fighter graphics over the top with the every time he said a joke, he would lose energy like in Street Fighter. And then he was like, finish him. Did you did yeah. you notice that part? I thought that that came out of nowhere. I, I didn't was like, he was roasting him. He was roasting his ass. I know, but the Street Fighter element just lost me. Now, had they done it, had they done it two or three times? In the movie, then it would have made sense, but it just kind of came out of nowhere. And sometimes with these movies, I feel like they try to I put too much in. But I'm gonna say this for TI and, and DC you. Young Fry to fund this movie themselves, no major investors, just these two gentlemen put their money together and gave us this. Well, um do you think about it? They used all their own people, they didn't have to pay no actors. Well, I'm sure everybody got paid, but you know what I'm saying? They didn't have to uh have actor tryouts and an audition you know they had their people i'm sure they used their own camera equipment that they use at the 85 south show like they um, didn't have to buy they didn't have to uh hire a camera crew and shit so i think like i said i think it was genius yeah it, it, i don't like i said that my good my bad my bad and ugly are not major bad and ugly you know what i'm saying right. um now now so let me say this and and I was really, really wondering where they were going with this. And I liked the way they cleaned it up because, you know, T.I. has had issues in the media. And a lot of things he, he do, he ends up on the wrong side of the stick when it comes to coverage. So especially uh, with you mentioning that, especially when he tried to me, which this kind of proves me wrong in it, that he can do comedy in his own way. But I don't think that he can do live comedy because it seems like he don't take jokes on himself that well because yeah, you know right he had that it. whole controversy in the with the lady comic and uh you know shit got real bad and he did in the comedy club but so to me it's like he 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 takes shit too personal to be a, a live comedian on stage and shit but this type of shit like this was his element as far as comedy goes well so because you really okay, so me and you agree that the messages to the little to the young boy, which is Ti's son, if you didn't know, that's oh, I did, son, yeah. yeah, that's his son King, um, and King does music also. Um, me and you both agree, no one told this kid anything wrong, and I like that in the movie because I know a lot of young people are going to watch this movie, so I think educating the children is something that I'm big on and giving them big i'm big on giving them good advice and that kind of the person i am i always try to give the best advice to the younger generation because somebody got to lead them into this thing called the future what scared me was what scared me was and 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 it's true all the older guys going to relate but i was scared that they were going to give the media something that they can feed off negatively because I was afraid because the boy was 17 and he was crushing on a girl that was 23. And I was I was praying that they did not hook them up because you I mean in the movie he was actually 15. Was he 15 or 17? Yeah, he, he was 15. Okay. So he was 15 years old, crushing on a girl that was 20, what, three? 20, yeah, she was 20, I think 23. Okay. I was afraid. They was gonna hook them up. I'm sitting there with my fingers crossed, like, please, please don't hook them up because if y'all do that, they're gonna desecrate this film. Do you agree? If they had done that, that would have been a terrible move. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was kind of waiting. I was like, well, is he gonna score? Because I hear stories all the time about dudes talking about when they was young, sleeping with an anti top, you know, a, a older woman, you know, as a first. So I was kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm glad that it didn't go there and it, you know, they made an agreement pinky prom when you get 20 and I'm 27, like we'll, we'll give it a try. So I, I was happy how they re resolved that. Yeah. Now that scared me. And um, I ain't gonna lie that phone call I just made, I made that 
phone call the day I sent the movie to you because they 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 sent it to me, warned my opinion. You know, I'm I'm unk over there too. <laughs> unk, <laughs> unk, unk, um, watch this. Let us know. And you know, they sent me a link. And it's like, look, man, I'm going and we're going to buy it and watch it and then call me back and tell me what you think. So I'm like, all right, cool shit. I didn't even know this thing was out like that. But I am very, very proud of what they brought to the screen. My question to you is this. Is the movie, in your opinion, because you told me, you've told me that you're not big on watching television and movies. Mm Mm-hmm. Is that more? And I need you to be honest, Bert. I need you to be really, really honest. Absolutely. Do you think that movie is big screen worthy? Yes. Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. A- anybody I've talked to, even when I since I told you I watched it twice back to back. After watching it the first time, I hit so many people up like y'all have to watch this movie. I told Gene again this morning. Like, you have to watch this movie. I was so excited to get in here and talk to you about it with somebody else that had seen the movie, you know, because I haven't come across anybody but you and I that have watched it. And so I was like, I was like, man, I want to talk about this movie. I want to talk about it, but nobody else has seen it. But like I said, it was, it was genius. It was like, I think you really need to go rewatch it because. It oh they oh my it was genius, it was so genius. Do okay. So, they said they said they said some shit, boy. I like I said from the roast to the real life advice, everything was uh, it was genius. Like I don't know another word for it. I don't. I don't know another word for it besides genius. Shout out to UTI. Props to you and DC Youngfly for real, for real. How do you feel about the scenery? Did they did they capture the what on? I've been there? I felt like I had been there. I felt like I knew G Mama and the candy lady. I, I know them folks. I um there was a relationship advice in there. Um when um the guy I can't remember and I, and so many credible people in here, I can't remember absolutely. everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why I said you really have to watch it more than once to catch everything everybody said. Uh, well, everybody's um, what's the word I'm looking for? To catch, like even Nav Green, like you don't see, like he is so funny to me. Like he is so underrated. Like he is so smooth with it and funny. Uh, like everybody just added their own seasoning to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And and the dish hat would not have been complete without that. All uh, right. Did you like the relationship advice? When like the one, because you know what the relationship Absolutely. advice Absolutely, it was spot on. Yes. Like he was like, look, man, don't remember. You got to have money. You got to have, because they were right. Like she told me, you got to have money. You got, you got to have money. And, and they know DJ Khaled shit. You got to, you know, do the thingy thing, but then at the same time, dude was like, "No, nah, be a man and do this," and that's right too. That's right too. Like they weren't wrong in any any advice. Like everybody, even the crackhead, give him good advice. All right, and I don't want to do no spoilers because I want people to watch it. But I want to. How do you feel about the um, respect your environment element of it? Oh my god, that was genius. It, like I said, I don't know what else to say because dude, come in. He didn't want. It. You could tell he had money. Even though, you know, it, it, when it gets to the end, and like, I don't want to give any spoiler, too, and you know what happened when, when he showed back up there. But um, uh, he didn't he didn't give the water boys no money for the water. He didn't buy nothing at the store. He showed up at the girl's door, empty hand. He didn't bring no blunts, no weed, no, no fucking McDonald's. He didn't do shit. Like, he was there on a mission for one thing, and he didn't even get that because uh, he didn't respect his environment. Yeah, going into yeah. a place like that, you have to, you can't, you can't go in there and act like you better than everybody, or your car going to be disassembled. So look, I'm gonna throw this out there. So if you don't respect your environment, that's kind of like what we talk about on the duel. Right. You're gonna get hit in the back of the head with the wrench if you don't come in here and respect hey, your environment. We got rules over here. <laughs> I, I, you know what, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Yes, I gotta watch it again. I did enjoy the movie. Um, I'm overly critical 
of people I know. And so when I watched it the first time, I literally felt like first 45 minutes was genius. Second, because the movie is an hour, it's set, uh, hour it's 18 minutes. minutes. An hour and 18, uh, 78 minutes. And I really thoroughly enjoyed the first 45 to 50 minutes. Um, no, you, you got to watch it again, Vic. I'm telling you, you got I'm serious. You you really do. Because the second time I laughed harder than the first time because I caught on the shit that I didn't hear the first time because I was listening to what the other dude said. You know, they they so much going on. And, and like I said, especially when he's roasting the fat guy because you hear him what the mechanic said, but you got the other two dudes on the porch doing the same thing in their own way. And it's like, if, if you didn't catch that, you know, because you were paying attention to what the mechanic, but that shit was so funny oh my god that's I also it the third time like i ain't even lying like that shit was gold it was golden especially for somebody like me who's been there been in that environment for probably more than half my life and it just resonated like it like i said i feel like i know them folks i am g mama g mama is me <laughs> Mama Bird should be G Mama Bird. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be the candy lady. I don't care. I I, I could relate to uh, even as far as the men. I could relate to all of them, like for real, for real. Hey, you but know I guess I, I'd be the big black girl on on the stoop talking shit with the other girl. Really, that was probably look, me. That was me. And I I got a shout out to my guy. If y'all don't subscribe to him, uh, he goes by the name of um, Goddamn Zoe. And he does, um, he does kind of like what we're doing. He does hip hop news with his twist. But goddamn Zoe is the person who played the booster. Okay, the little, the little uh, funny dude that was going and getting the clothes and sitting on the porch with the other two girls. Yeah, he yeah, when it's so clothes. He, um, shout out to him because he's a very known YouTuber, and he is actually one of the people. Who convinced me to YouTube? I used to put my radio, I used to just throw stuff on YouTube and didn't care about it. Um, goddamn Zoe started his YouTube career and I used to sell him costumes. He 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 was doing what Gene was doing before me and Gene Potter was even on YouTube. Right. And that led him to being on Wilding Out and um He's killing it on TikTok. He kills it here on YouTube. Um, but yeah, he and he that was his first movie role. But I expect big things from him. But that's one of my people who who I sold bunches and bunches of costumes to. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And you know what else was really dope about that movie? That movie was filmed here in Atlanta. And 90% uh -huh. of that cast reside here in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They used all their people. Like, I don't even think they really brought outsiders in. Because all those people I've seen on 85 South Show several times. And I thought <laughs> it was funny, too, how it started out with DC and Carlos and the other dude in the car. And they took his money to get the weed. And like, uh, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. <laughs> don't spoil it. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm saying, though. They had so much going on and so much funny shit. Like, you could, it's almost a different movie every time you watch it. It just gets better and better. I'm telling you, it's definitely worth the second watch. Yeah, there, there are a lot of angles in it. And in and, and talking to you, you, I don't know if I was going to watch it a second time, but you most definitely have convinced me to watch it a second time because it does have angles. And I'm not talking camera angles. There are a lot of things in life in there that stand true. You know the only thing missing from that? The only thing missing from that. Absolutely. The only thing I feel like was missing was, well, a couple characters they could have added. But they covered the bases. But they need, I feel like they needed a preacher man. Because every hood got a preacher man. Every hood got the guy who's been to jail and he found Allah or Jesus. So now he's out here in the hood trying to save souls. I think we needed that and I think we need kind of like the, the the dude in um uh, the guy in the the Wayans movie that always liked the white girls, but he was real spiritual. Yeah. I can't think of uh, 
that guy. Okay, yeah, the, I know what you're talking the about. Muslim with but the, the guy wife. that was the gambler, yeah, yeah. And I think the guy that was the gambler was borderline like that, but I, he wasn't real religious. But he just thought that, like, he had all his isms that they would pop up on the screen because he always yeah. said the words wrong. And so the candy lady's husband was correcting what he really meant, and they was like, "Oh, he'd been in jail, you know, a few times, whatever." So he he kind of I think was that character, but he just wasn't religious. I and I definitely think they needed the 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 cool white dude. Who relates? Do you think you know what? You're right. You're right. That was right. missing. They should have hit up oh um uh he's like the only white rapper I've ever seen on uh 85 South. J uh, Jack Harlow. That they should have hit up Jack Harlow. And they needed the white girl with the black boyfriend. Yeah, you're right. You're right. If they had had that, they would have had the hood. Any hood USA. <laughs> I agree with that. I do. I agree. I can agree with that. But as a, as a whole, you know what I really enjoyed most? And they were able to portray these positive images of the hood, which gets nothing but negative images. Absolutely. People just think that from the outside looking in, oh, it's just a broke-ass community. No, they lost some money going through there. They and lost some money going through there. And it's a lot of love. And they lots care about the hood. Absolutely. All right, Bird, that's um, without giving out any spoilers, we just gave him 30 minutes of our review of the apartment. Before I let you let these people know where to find you, I want to let everybody know the apartments will be on Tubi, but there's no set release date because of the writers and actor strike. But if you're interested in watching the apartments, you can go to www.thepartments404. Dot com. You can rent it or you can buy it. You can rent it or you can buy it. They did not pay me to say this. Um, I I believe in supporting the community. And I think everybody, if you want a good laugh, it's $4.99 to rent it for seven days or it's $10 to own it. The $10 is worth you having it forever on your computer. Man, I'm telling you, could, yeah, yeah. Now, definitely. if you ain't got $4.99 and you ain't got 10 you can hit me a bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we tried to put it. Oh, and no. A, and for a little small cash app donation. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> but no, it was an honor and a privilege to be able to see this and be probably one of the, like you said, there's no reviews out that. So to me, to be one of the first uh, to get to check it out, man, it was a. Uh, yeah, it made my day yesterday. I loved it. And I was like, I'm going to send this to Bird. Bird says she don't really like movies, but we're going to see. Oh, yeah. This one, like I said, it was it was genius. It was genius. And I, I'll stand on it. I really think it was better than Friday. All right. Bird, where can they find you? Boss Lady Bird on the YouTube or on IG Bird 420. All right. Guess what? Before we get up out of here, because me and Bird always give you guys a end a a artist spotlight and i know y'all probably like, uh-huh see they're doing a review they ain't even gonna do no artist spotlight well guess what this movie is full of artists right full of artists right. so Absolutely. artist spotlight tokyo jets tokyo jets she plays one of the tasha's one of the yeah, that, that's who that's who I was uh, yeah say, referring. She was the one on the port, the the, the uh as you the call them, the Lizzo top girl. Yeah, that was me. That was me. No, okay, but that was and she had a friend that was thin. Yeah, that is that's Tokyo Jets. She's that's Ti's artist. She's artist. She's his only female artist. She has a project out. Um, matter of fact, if you at the beginning of the movie, because the, the music in the movie is amazing, also, we didn't even Absolutely. mention it. But she has a song with TI, they redid Tupac's Hit Em Up. But if y'all want to, definitely follow Tokyo Jets on the Instagram at T O K Y O J E T Z Tokyo Jets. Um, she's a proud mother and she doesn't do what I like to call prostitute rap, she's not selling her cooch. Hey, that's why I don't like them female rappers. Big. That's what they be doing. So the artist, they walk. 
The artist spotlight is Tokyo Jets. She's part of the Grand Hustle family. Y'all make sure y'all go help run our numbers up. Get in her chat and say, hey, you heard Boss Lady Bird and Vic XL, the Riding Dirty Show, talking about you and tell her good job on the movie if you check it out. All right? All right. So they ain't think we're going to give it to them. Hey, and the person on the phone, again, if you want to Google him and you think Bird and Vic is flexing, his name is Doug Peterson. Um, Doug Peterson, he's the vice president of Grand Hustle. Um, he's also part of TI's management team, and he's been with TI since the beginning of his career. Um, you can Google him also, Doug Douglas Peterson. That was the gentleman on the phone. Me and Burr are official, like a referee's whistle. Don't play with it. Absolutely. Can I throw in one more thing that I absolutely love? And, and I know it's actually a part of the culture in Atlanta. It's like they have their own language. Shout it. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I was like, I got I got to learn. I got to learn this language. Look, and look, bro, you know how I be talking to you on air like people think they can play me, but I already know it coming. Oh, I talked to you off air too. I already know. My no, guy. but look, did you realize <laughs> He thought it was a trick, and he was trying to get off the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a holler, y'all. You hear him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't know what I had him in. <laughs> and then he realized, like, oh, Vic ain't playing, so Uncle ain't playing, so let me. But, yeah, um, man, appreciate y'all. Y'all can follow me on Riding Dirty Radio on Instagram, Riding Dirty Radio on TikTok, Riding Dirty Radio on Twitter, and the channel is Riding Dirty Radio. If you had not already hit subscribe, Please hit subscribe. We're going to continue to bang y'all in the head with some of the best media coverage in the game. Okay? In the game. Y'all going to remember the name, Ryan Dirty Radio Show. Boss Lady Bird, Vic XL. We're going to always bring y'all the stories. Even if we don't bring it to you first, we're going to bring it to you with our spin on it. Go watch the apartments. Anything you got for them, Bird? No, I think that's it. Y'all go watch it. Definitely go watch it. You know you got to give them at least one my guy before we go. What up, my guy? Hey, y'all. It's your boy, Big XL. False Lady Bird, time is one thing you can never, ever, ever get back. And if you watch this episode, we love and appreciate you. And until next time, y'all. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.